Okay, let us start. So, uh, today we are going to look at some problems based on propositional logic, very basic problems essentially. So, the first problem is if L is countable, then SL is countably infinite. What is the answer? How do you show that? Bounded above using? Bounded below using? L. L. Okay, yeah. I mean, uh, well, I should say uh, is non empty, yeah. That, that thing needs to be added. Yes, so we need to show that this is countably infinite. So, it is bounded below. So, suppose P belongs to L, then negation P, negation of negation P, negation of uh, negation of negation P and so on, they are elements of our L formulas. So, how many are there like this? There are countably infinitely many such formulas, right. So, therefore, therefore, uh, Aleph naught is a lower bound for S L okay, because these are all formulas, they are all distinct, yes. So, therefore, this is a lower bound and upper bound for, for the upper bound, you, you have to notice that every formula is a finite string of symbols, yes. So, which symbols can we use? anything in L and what other symbols can we use? Conjunction, negation and parenthesis. So, there are, so any L formula is a finite string, string as in like we are writing a word, word or string finite string of symbols from L and these symbols. So, if L is countable, then what can you say about this set? That is also countable, yeah. So, uh, which is a countable set? Therefore, S L is contained inside the set of finite strings with countable alphabet. See, uh, I am saying contained, is it equal? Can it be equal? Can I just write open parenthesis? Is that a formula? No. So, therefore, it is contained, properly contained. But uh, finite strings with countable alphabet, how can you write that set? We can write it as a countable union, countable union of strings of length n where n varies, correct. So, let a n denote the set of finite uh, sorry length n strings with 
with alphabet L union ok this one you know. So, what can you say about the cardinality of a n? Come on, a n is countable, a n is countable, how? For each place we can choose one symbol from a. So, therefore, a n is actually a finite power, the power n. This language cross language cross, I mean this alphabet cross alphabet cross alphabet taken n times. So, therefore, a n is since finite product you all should be prepared for the exam and instead you are not saying anything. This is something we did in week 2. Yeah, since finite product of countable sets is countable a n is countable and hence so is union of a n, n belongs to omega correct. I mean if we need we can use axiom of choice, yeah, countable axiom of choice and this union a n is precisely the right hand side here. So, therefore, we are done. So, we showed that aleph naught is a lower bound, aleph naught is an upper bound and therefore, we get what we need. Any questions? This is perhaps the simplest possible question. Let us go to the next question. Suppose S is a is an L formula and let L s and R s denote the number of left and right parentheses in S. Then can you show that L s is equal to R s? What kind of formulas are there? There are three different types of formulas. The first formula is a propositional variable. How many left brackets are there in a prop propositional variable? Zero. Zero. And for right bracket, so L s is equal to R s. What is the other form? Yeah, so every formula, let me write that, each S in SL is of one of the following forms, one of the three forms. The first one is that S belongs to L. And here L s is equal to 0 is equal to R s. Second, s is equal to negation t. Then what, ca what can we say? I mean what kind of proof should we use? Induction. Proof by induction, very good. So, s is equal to this. Uh, So, uh, I mean let us say this is our base case, yeah maybe I should change the order. I should say that this is my base case. And then inductive case, one of the three forms. Uh, so, here I will write we will use induction. Uh, on 
n. What is n here? Induction on n. So, s belongs to s 0 l that is what we were doing earlier. So, here uh, belongs to s n plus 1 l and we wanted where t belongs to s n l. So, what can you say about t? The number of left parenthesis in t. So, then L of S is equal to 1 plus L of T, but L of T is equal to, so this is by induction hypothesis, this is equal to 1 plus R of T and this is equal to R of S. Similarly, so inductive case has two steps, S is equal to T conjunction U, where T and U are in SNL, so the result holds and then L of S is equal to 1 plus L of T plus L of U, correct? So, this is equal to by induction hypothesis 1 plus R of T plus R of U is equal to R of S. So, we are done. Very simple and boring proof. But let us see if you can use the same logic over here. Suppose W is a non-empty proper left subword of a propositional formula. Non-empty proper left subword. So basically, I mean I will give you an example first. Suppose I am writing this. Then I can have this word just one parenthesis, then I can have this word two parenthesis, three, four, yeah, any of those left subwords. And what do we need to show? That L of W is bigger than R of W. What is our method of proof? Induction, there can't be anything else. So, once again there is base case, yeah, I will perhaps not write the entire proof, you can formalize it. The base case is that S belongs to S 0 L. Then can there exist a non-empty proper left subword? It just has length 1, yeah, so either the subword is empty or it is everything. So, there is nothing to prove here, yeah, so base case nothing to prove. Then what about the inductive case? In inductive case, you can either have S is equal to negation T or you can have S is equal to this. So, let us consider this case. Okay. Uh, then what will happen if, yeah, I mean I am just going to write this, if S is equal to negation T, then non-empty proper left subword of S has one of the following forms. Well, it can be just this parenthesis. It can be that parenthesis followed by negation or it can be T prime, yeah, uh, sorry, I mean maybe I should call it uh, W dash, where W dash is a left subword of T, or finally it can be just this. Okay, these are the only possible four forms. Now, what will you do in the first case? If it is just a parenthesis, then how many left parenthesis are there? 1, right, 0. Second one also same, 1 and 0. Third one, 
what will you do? If it is a proper left subword of T, W dash is a proper left subword of T, then by induction hypothesis, you already know that L of W dash is bigger than R of W dash and then what is L of W? 1 plus L of W dash and therefore you can prove the result. And in the last case, well T is, T is a formula. So therefore L of T and R of T are equal and therefore 1 plus L of T is equal to L of S and that is strictly greater than R of T done. Okay, can you do the second part as well? If S is equal to oops, T conjunction U, then what are the forms? Either it can be just this parenthesis, open parenthesis or it can be open parenthesis followed by some subword, left subword of T in which case we know what to do. Then or it can include an entire T and then just this in which case also this open parenthesis is extra or it can contain some left subword of U. It can go until some left subword of U in which case you can use the result for U, induction hypothesis for U. Yeah, so this is again very boring and straightforward proof. I am not going to finish this. However, we need this result. The result is interesting, but the proof is boring. That is what I am saying. We need this result to prove the unique readability theorem. So, we know that every single formula can be written as one of the three forms. Either it is in the language or it is negation of something or it is conjunction of two formulas. The question is, can we write a single formula using two such different forms? Any ideas on how to prove this? If I say that the length is 1, length of this formula is 1, then what can it be? It only can be a propositional variable and that propositional variable is uniquely determined. So without loss, we can assume that the length is bigger than 1, which means we have taken care of S0 basically. Okay. Now the question is, can it be of form 2 and form 3 simultaneously? Can it be of form 2 and form 3 simultaneously? Yes, if necessary. Do you have any idea in mind how to count and then mm -hmm. prove it? L of T plus? L of V plus 2 uh, plus 1 and for the second one it would be 1 plus L. And on which subword are you applying that? You have to tell me which subword is that? The whole formula. The whole formula. The whole formula L is always equal. L and R are equal. In both these cases, right? We proved that. Even if it is of second form or third form, it does not matter. L and R are always going to be equal. So, but if they are the same, then L of one should be equal to L of the other. Yes, L of one should be equal to L of the other. Can we prove it? And how will you prove that? That is what my question is. <laughs> so, if E is not a uh, propositional variable, then we would have at least one. Uh, you, do you mean U? U is not a proposition. Uh, we do not have to go that way, just look at the strings, how they start. Okay? So, uh, what can T be? In, in formula 3, what can T be? 
t can either be a propositional variable or a formula which is not a variable so either t can be a variable or the first syllable the first letter in t can be a parenthesis or a propositional variable whereas look at form, form 2 in form 2 what is the second letter its negation so therefore they can never be equal to each other yeah so uh, it is enough to argue when s is not in l if s is equal to negation t for some t oh perhaps i will make a slight change yeah uh, we are facing problems because i am using the same notation over here i am going to convert this into u1 and u2 okay if s is equal to negation t for some t in sl then the second syllable a uh, second letter is negation however if s is equal to u1 conjunction u2 then the second syllable or letter syllable and letter are the same thing we will use syllable very properly next time uh, so maybe i should use letter uh, second letter is either an open parenthesis or a propositional variable therefore no formula no formula no l formula can be written as both form 2 and form 3 because their strings are different the second symbol is different okay now yes Alex, suppose u1 is also negation of something and even if it is negation after negation we put a parenthesis so don't forget that yeah but that will be then the third letter will be negation also. third letter will be negation but the second letter in that case will always be open parenthesis okay. whereas in that negation in second form it will be negation so therefore they are going to be different any other questions? Yes. No, sir, uh, is it necessary to, for every formula to have a unique string? I mean, uh, you just don't want to solve this question. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, all of you know coding. Yeah. So, in coding, don't you have to be precise, otherwise, there are bugs? So, why does a code work? Because it has unique readability whatever you write should have a unique meaning if you mess up one symbol will it accept your program will it run no so you can be precise there then why are you asking why i mean this is the logic behind coding but we can put as many brackets as we have. you can put as many brackets because uh, even in coding can you put as few brackets as possible yeah i mean if you miss out on some parenthesis will your code still work parenthesis curly brackets square brackets whatever you are doing if you mess them up then it doesn't work one of the rules of coding 
is also what we wrote here. The left and right parenthesis should always match. The number matches, but, the number matches, but the number can vary. Yeah. Yes, the number can vary, but it again has unique readability. So, uh, there are rules like what binds closer. We also had those rules. Yeah, that negation binds closer than conjunction and disjunction, which themselves bind closer than implication and by implication. So, there are some rules. Yeah, but they are taught to a machine. Yeah, it is not automatic. Everything has to be taught. Computer programming works on the principle of Turing machine. Yeah, it only reads one symbol at a time. So, that is that string of symbols, every program is a finite string of symbols. So, that string of symbols must be uniquely readable. Similarly, in logic also, if we are doing something formally, then it should be uniquely readable. And uh, in fact, yesterday we showed an application. Do you have any other question? Are you happy with this? Okay. So, uh, okay. So, no L formula can be written as form 2 and form 3 both. That much is clear. Now, if I have two formulas of, uh, I mean the same formula, can it be written uh, in two different ways using form 2? So, the next question is, if S is equal to negation T and S is equal to negation T dash for T and T dash in SL, then can you conclude that T is equal to T dash? No, 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 not logically equivalent. We, there is no logical equivalence here yet. Yeah, this is, we are talking about plain syntax. See, how do you recover T from this S? You remove the first two and you remove the last letter. Then you can obtain T. Similarly, if you remove the first two and last letter, then you can obtain T prime. Then clearly, T is equal to T prime. So, there is no question whatsoever. Okay. So, therefore, there is no problem here. However, we need to do some work if S is equal to U1 conjunction U2 and S is equal to U1 dash conjunction U2 dash for U1, U2, U1 dash, U2 dash in SL, then, then we have to do some work. Yes, so first we said that, oh, I mean, uh, it was propositional variable just length 1, so there is nothing to check. It can only be a form 1. Then we showed that 2 and 3 simultaneously cannot occur. Then we said that 2 and 2 cannot occur simultaneously. Now, only remaining case is 3 and 3. Now, what will happen in this case? Well, if u1 and u1 dash are equal, then we are done. Yeah, so, if they are not equal, then what will happen? I am going to write this string. Yeah, so, this is u1. So, without loss, we can assume that this is the length, yeah. If if u1 is not equal to u1 dash, then without loss of generality, assume that u1 is a proper left subword of u1 dash. I am beginning to read in two different ways. Yeah? 
So the first way is that I start with u1 and then I hit this conjunction symbol. But now there is a another way where I have to go a bit further to hit the conjunction symbol. Then without loss of generality, one of them has smaller length because we are talking about length. Length is in integers and it is a linear order. So trichotomy, yeah, we are using trichotomy here. So if u1 is a proper left subword of u1 dash and u1 is of course a formula, so it is non-empty. So then what will happen? u1 dash is a formula and it is a proper left subword. So therefore, the number of left parentheses in u1 has to be greater than number of right parentheses, which is a contradiction. A contradiction to u1 in SL. Because if u1 is a formula, then the number of left and right parentheses must be equal. Sir, yes. Because it is the same string. Yeah, both of them are S. Uh, a and C are not same, like are you thinking of A and C as letters or they are formulas? If they are formulas, then one of, so either their lengths are equal or their lengths are different. If their lengths are equal, then we are done, right? If their lengths are equal, then you go only that much length. The formula is still same, see, this is S, this is S formula is still same. So therefore, if the lengths are equal, then u1 is equal to u2. The next symbol is conjunction and therefore u2 is also equal to u2 prime. Uh, u1 is equal to u1 prime and u2 is equal to u2 prime. So we are done. If their lengths are different, then what can you say? One of them is longer than the other They are, I mean, uh, they are not necessarily, so I said without loss of generality. It can be that u1 is longer than u1 prime. In the same order? Yes, sir. Then only we will be able to say about I, I mean, what order are you talking about? The string is, there is only one string. There is only one string namely S. U1 as a string. Can you give me an example? To some extent, but exactly same extent. That is the point of proving this. I mean, uh, are uh, all of you questioning why we need unique readability? Is that the point? See, uh, let us give uh, take an example. So, negation P, conjunction negation Q. Is this good enough for you? Oh, maybe. Uh, Maybe I will, I will take two things. Maybe I will take conjunction Q, conjunction negation Q. This is a valid formula. Yes. So now can I write it in two different ways? What is your point now? Okay, which which one can be u1? What can be u1 prime? Uh, negation p join q. Uh, meet q. Sorry, neg negation p conjunction q is u1. Yeah, that's unique. But 
see i cannot give you an example where un and un prime are different because that's what we are proving it's not possible yes okay that's a good question that if we are doing u1 conjunction u2 and then you do u2 conjunction u1 then they are different strings we are not talking about formulas up to logical equivalence here the this conjunction is commutative up to logical equivalence but it's not the same string see otherwise what's the point yeah we said that p is a formula p conjunction p is a formula then p conjunction p conjunction p is a formula and there are infinitely many formulas all of them i mean uh, all but the first one is useless up to logical equivalence but actually as strings of symbols they are different so therefore u1 conjunction u2 and u2 conjunction u1 even if they are logically equivalent we think of them as the same they are actually different if u1 and u2 are different then they are different yeah so therefore we still need to prove this result any problems in the proof okay then we have shown unique readability now let's go ahead okay draw the hasse diagram for this boolean algebra so how many atoms are there in this boolean algebra four atoms so how many elements are there 16 can you tell me the atoms oh, oh, uh, let us start with uh, the bottom most element what is it contradiction which contradiction should i choose i, I should always talk about the class of a formula equivalence class of p conjunction negation p very good then tell me some atom p conjunction q is an atom okay good any other atom p conjunction negation q okay then other atoms negation p conjunction q and negation p conjunction negation q okay good now we can if we are allowed to use all the symbols then can you tell me what is the top one contradiction top one is contradict tautology ha huh. how to uh, write tautology p disjunction negation p okay what are the coatoms coatoms are precisely the atoms of the inverted boolean algebra negations of all of these yeah can you have some nice forms for them p disjunction q yes okay then p disjunction negation q yes uh huh then p disjunction negation p disjunction q and negation p disjunction negation q okay so in the truth table for a contradiction yeah i mean the, it is a column it is the column in the truth table how many trues are there zero how many trues are there in the uh, column for atoms one. yeah so one how many for tautology and how many for coatoms four minus one yeah okay what are the middle formulas now okay p q then negation p negation q p double implies q very good uh, p, uh, p, 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 p double implies q 
negation p double implies q okay good and then you can connect yeah i am not going to do this networking so there are precisely two truths in the column corresponding to all these formulas and how many can there be it's a column of length 4 and there are precisely two truths so 4 choose 2 6 so there are 6 so 1 4 6 4 1 okay uh, I hope I don't have to teach you how to convert from one set of connectives to another set of connectives if I ask you to write this uh, p if and only if q yeah I mean p by implication q only using conjunction you can write it only using disjunction and negation you can write it yeah I mean negation will always be there but only using certain connectives that you can do any problems so far okay then let us look at some examples of logical equivalences and relations so what about double negation p is logically equivalent to p is that true how will you show that truth table okay so perhaps this is simple truth tables you can all draw but there are some interesting questions there yeah so uh, perhaps this you can do but p dis disjunction negation p and r implies q implies r they are also logically equivalent and yesterday i used a comment that there is no functional relation functionality just depends on this that this contains p and this contains q and r so there is no causal cause and effect what happens is that this is a tautology and that side is also a tautology because see if r is false then f the whole implication is true but if r is true then q implies r is also true because r is true right so therefore true implies true so everything is true always yeah it's very easy to check this so therefore both of them are tautologies now uh, we can ask similar questions yeah so for example if i write down some other formula let's say i write down uh, p disjunction q and then i ask whether this equivalence class is less equal the class for p if and only if negation q if i ask this how will you solve this problem implication yeah i mean you take this formula then you take implies the other formula and then you show try to show that it is a tautology if it is a tautology then then this this less equal happens and if it is not true then the implica the less equal relation does not hold however yeah i mean uh, is there a quicker way of doing this see in general i am asking you this how to check this if there exists yeah so uh, sorry the answer is no if there is a valuation v such that v of s is true but v of t is false so basically when i am saying that this implies this is a tautology what does that mean that whenever the column in the truth table for this formula has t then the same row in the column for this formula must have t yeah? if it does not happen then there is some t here but f uh, i mean false there 
in that case we do not do anything. So, you can uh, solve all the problems related to this. Okay, I think uh, the congruence relation question we have already done and yesterday I tried to show this, yeah, I mean in the atomless Boolean algebra case, I tried to show this, uh, maybe I should write on the next slide. So, truth less than, so some non, uh, non contradiction formula was given and then I was trying to show this. So, this is given that S is not a contradiction, so therefore this is less than. So, because this is less than, we obtain some valuation for which V S is true, V S is true and we needed to find something in between and how did we find that something in between? If our language is countably infinite, then S being a finite string of symbols, it can only use finitely many propositional variables. So, there is a new variable which does not appear in the formula S and I choose that, I will call that variable P and then I can put here, I can either put here S conjunction P or I can put here S conjunction negation P. Now, I know that there is a va valuation V which makes S true. Now, that valuation is either going to make P true or P false. If it makes P true, then S conjunction P is true. Okay? So, S conjunction P is true. So, therefore, we, we have witnessed that S conjunction P is not a contradiction, understood? On the other hand, if V makes P false, then S conjunction negation P is no, oh sorry, S conjunction uh, P is false. So, therefore, we have witnessed this less than and then we construct another valuation which only differs from V in the value of P and then you can simultaneously witness this or that. Yeah, so that is how you have to show both these less thans. Yeah, just showing one of them is not sufficient, both have to be shown.